Hey there, it's Bob's your uncle, and I'm down here in beautiful Baja, Mexico, and I'm here with my Hobie iTrek 11, and I'm going to show you a bunch of the modifications that I did on this to make it one of the best saltwater fishing kayaks out there. This is the uh, this is the, the kayak as it's set up now for my fishing adventures, and uh, let's start with the underside here. This is the cart that I carry it around on. You can see I've I've added two PVC tubes to a basic uh, kayak cart that's uh, sold on Amazon and uh, I've padded them out with a little bit of inner tube and some foam padding so that they fit the bottom of the hull quite nicely and the thing I like about this uh, cart particularly is, well first of all the big balloon tires, you got to have them down here with the soft sand and it's also got a kickstand so holds it in place for you while you're mounting the kayak and taking the kayak off it. So nice, nice, simple, easy to use system for that. Uh, one of the biggest modifications that I've made here is the Yak Attack um, rail mounts and the Hobie H rails. You get the longest ones possible obviously and you've got a lot of storage area here that wasn't available. One of the big things you want of course is uh, is a fish finder and I've got my Garmin mounted here on the Yak Attack um, fish finder mount and battery sits inside there and the transducer sits up here out of the way pulls down when you need it and uh, this is a heavy little unit by the time you've got the weight of the box and the battery and everything in here so what I've done is I've added two rod holders um, to the bottom of my cup holder here and those tie into the rail just like so and I can clip them on and off so when I take this uh, cup holder off I can uh, then take the, the seat off as well and the rails off and, and mount this whole thing flat on the top of my roof if that's how I want to carry it but the, the big thing is that the stability of this it ties in this whole rail very nicely uh, with the rest of the kayak and it's not flopping around particularly when you get a fish on and suddenly your whole rail starts to be and one boo-boo um, I forgot to swap out I put these screws in initially and I was going to swap them out for stainless I didn't oops I'm gonna to have to do that when I get home if I can still get them out of there but uh, make sure all your hardware is stainless if you're going into salt water. so let's talk about the seat and modifications to that um, Hobie seat is a pretty comfortable seat to begin with and I've done a few other things to add to the comfort and the usability of it. Underneath the seat you can see I've got a, I've got a whole under seat organizer. Um, this is one that uh, came from Native uh, which is my other uh, fishing kayak that's Propel and um, this holds two plano boxes in the bottom here. They are velcroed in so that they don't fall out and uh, there's room for your pliers for your uh, lip grabber for your your little beater uh, and some other tools if you need them uh, it just keeps everything handy that way and uh, I mounted that on two pieces of PVC pipe forward and backwards they are screwed in to the frame and then gooped on there just to make sure they're gonna stick around but it really makes for a very useful and a uh, very stable uh, place to hold your gear. You don't need to have a tackle box or any kind of big box in the back here. And everything is buttoned down because when you're launching and returning here, you're always dealing with surf and you can get flipped. Um, it's happened and things get scattered all over the beach. And if you've got something like this, uh, everything is tucked away and is still attached and you're not gonna lose it. On the other side here, you'll see one of the nice things that uh, Hobie makes for their H rails is this rod holder. And the beauty of this rod holder is that it's got elastic straps here that go over and lock the, the rods into place so that, again, when you're launching and uh, coming back in, you're not going to lose your rods if you happen to flip over. You should never have your rods in a vertical position anyhow because they'll snap right off. But uh, this way they're tucked away in the side and they're not going to get lost and damaged. Plus you can still put your 
paddle there uh, without interfering with the lock part. Part of your uh, machine here, of course, is the Mirage Drive. And um, what I did when I bought this rig new is I asked the dealer to swap out a 180 for the standard one. The 180 is the one with reverse. And I'll tell you what, if you're going fishing, you gotta have reverse. Uh, I fish in estuaries and mangroves and rivers and creeks and all of those things you got to have reverse. You got to be able to back up on a moment's notice. So I basically just had them swap it out, paid a little extra for the 180, and I've been thankful ever since. The other modification I made to this one was I put some little hex screws onto the the uh, foot pads themselves. Just keeps your your foot from slipping off here, which uh, it tended to do otherwise. And there's steel coil leash here. This one's wrapped in plastic, so again, it doesn't rest up on me. And uh, it just protects that uh, that $1,000 drive unit that uh, you just don't want to lose should it happen to slide off when you're you're uh, coming in through the surf. So big net. Um, emphasis on big. And here I, I need a pretty big net for some of the fish. Um, leave the gaff at home. Gaffs and Inflatables do not mix. Sooner or later, you're going to poke a hole in your uh, in the side of your boat, and uh, you'll be you'll be sorry. So, the other modification I made up front here is a nice padded hand grip for the strap. It just makes pulling this thing around in the soft sand a whole lot. On this side, I've got an extra mount here, and that's for my downriggers when I'm back home fishing some of the lakes. Yeah. Northern BC downriggers pretty nice for some of those big rainbows and some of those deep lakes, so it uh, makes for a nice, nice combination uh, for a some of the other modifications to the seat. Uh, you can see this purple honeycomb there. That's basically it's an office chair pad. Um, it's not absorbent; it just sheds water, but it makes a huge difference in terms of just your butt comfort for a number of hours. And sometimes I'm out there five or six hours at a time. And uh, yeah, you want to be comfortable. The other part that I added here is pool noodles right around my, my lumbar support area. I got two pool noodles tucked in there and that makes for a really nice lumbar support built into this seat. I also like this seat because it's got the storage area in the back and I can stick my windbreaker, sunblock, you know, a few of those kind of things out of the way, um, but they're there when I need them. Here's another little trick. Uh, I don't know whether you've used one of these, but this is a burlap bag. Basically, this is a sandbag bag. And uh, they make great fish bags. You get them wet. Um, the cooling of the water as it condenses makes for nice and cool fish inside, keeps the sun off it. And um, it'll, it'll, this will keep your fish cool for a couple of hours uh, without having to add ice. And ice is uh, one thing we don't have a lot of down here in the Baja because I'm boondocking and there's not capability for making a lot of ice. So uh, burlap bag, just get it wet, keep it wet. And uh, it rolls up and stores right underneath your seat out of the way like that. And there's no smelly fish bag to have to wash out at the end and no buying ice. Uh, the other thing I, I highly recommend is one of these little inflatable vests. Um, you know, I've never, I've never inflated it, never had to, and don't get the self-inflating ones because as soon as they get wet, they go off, and uh, you'll be sorry. But uh, this makes for a real nice low-profile PFD, and it's definitely worth uh, having in some of the some of the waves that I'm out in here. So that's kind of the, the overview of the, the rig here. And uh, if you got any questions, just put them on my site here. And appreciate you, you following and subscribing. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you back here for the next round of Bob's Your Uncle.